Hey chatters. In this video, we're going to have an optional session. If you know what you're doing, you can skip this. But before we actually get into coding the Obsidian plugin that we're going to be creating together, uh, we want to go over the documentation around its API. So first off, if you just go to this website, I'll stick it in my description. You get a nice little overview that they're using Obsidian to connect things, to build your uh, first plugin and submit it. We're not going to pay too much attention to these right now. Uh, and really what we're going to focus on is right in here, this little plugin area. So just to give you an idea of what I mean by an API, really, this is like the control center to Obsidian. It's mostly open source, which just means you're allowed to make plugins that interact with the things that Obsidian can do on its own with its own plugins or the vault. So you can leverage the text editor, for example. We have all these things that we can do to, to mess around with the text. Uh, the interface. So again, this is like the built-in front end. You can have your ribbon actions, which are on the side. You click a button and it can run your plugin. Uh, your settings, all this kind of stuff, it goes over in great detail. Now, this is important for you, and especially when you're starting. The LLMs don't really necessarily have the most up-to-date information on Obsidian, right? Because they were trained prior to whatever the most current data is. Plus, it's, it might have to reach deep in order to find that information related to Obsidian. Especially when you're starting, if you don't know what your options are, I would definitely go through these just so you understand what you actually have access to and can mess with. And then also, if you want that in your program, you go to Workspace and you just highlight this whole thing and you stick it inside of the large language model that you're talking with to help create this so that it knows. So this is what we're going to be using in order to help build the structure of our plugin. And this is really the already set like bones of the building that you can flesh out using your plugin. We'll get into the actual code in the next video, but there's a few things that I want to show you. Again, that we talked about in our first video, but now it's important that you actually see what they are and what I mean. So we're going to start off with the manifest.json here. Again, this is the, your license, your ID for the plugin. You have an ID name that you're going to go with, the name of your plugin, the version number, a short description, who made it, if you have a website, and then is desktop only. So is it going to work on just the desktop or the phone and the desktop? So we're actually going to change this to false because I'm going to make it actually work on the phone. The second file I want to show you is the package.json. The package.json is more or less a list of all the little packages that you're going to download to make this thing happen. And you can see here I have Obsidian. So how do we download things? So we want to go to the terminal. You can bring that up with control shift squiggly line in the top left of your keyboard. Or you can always do it the manual way. You come up here to terminal and you run new terminal. And all we're going to do is we're going to write an npm i. And we're going to hit enter. And all this is going to do is it's going to look at the package.json and it's going to download all of those packages. You're going to see two things showed up here. One is the package lock.json. Don't worry about this. This is just now you're locked into these dependencies or whatever. And then the node modules. This is all of the different packages that we downloaded by doing that MPMI, that 152 packages, including the Obsidian package. A quick reminder, don't forget your gitignore if you're going to be pushing this to GitHub. Just do a .gitignore file, and you want to stick in node modules because you don't necessarily want to upload all this stuff to GitHub. Your main.js, which we'll talk about near the end of the plugin, and then your package lock.json. These are just things you don't necessarily need to share. And similarly, if you have other files in here, that's totally okay too. Just anything you don't want to go up to the GitHub, that's all you got to do. Thanks, chatters. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful to orient you to the space and get your packages downloaded. Now we're actually a dip into the code, and I'm going to show you how I built this plugin as well as how we actually get to test it and use it in our Obsidian Vault.